Welcome back to another episode. Today we have the pleasure of having Jason Kreider here and we're going to be talking about the PRUs which stand for the uh, Programmable Real-Time Units. Thank you for being here Jason. I'm happy to be here. Jason is a co-founder of uh, the Beagle uh, Board Foundation and you're also a uh, TI employee? Yeah, I'm an application engineer in the Citara group at uh, Tech TI. And the Citara is the processor that is running on the Beagleboard? Absolutely. Can you quickly just tell us, like, general, from like a high level, what is, what is Beagleboard? What is special about, Be about the Beagleboard? And then we'll get into the detail of the PRU. So when we started Beagleboard in general, right, it was about sort of democratizing access to computer, computing power, right, and being able to build embedded things using traditional computing tools, right? You know, plug in a monitor, keyboard, and mouse, and use it like a, like a desktop computer. Um, but, uh, but small and affordable, and something you can actually build and pull, put into a real product. Um, and we started out with mobile phone chips. When we did the Beagle Bone, we actually started with the, the a processor that was built for industrial applications, right? So there's a lot of different peripherals in there to handle uh, different things, like there's analog digital converters, there's pulse width modulators, and a whole bunch of things that you could use to build stuff out with. CAN bus controllers, and it just goes on and on and on. BeagleBone has this really cool feature where you can, when you plug in the BeagleBone to your PC, it shows up as a, as a network interface, and that's really all you need. You plug it in, and from that point, you are you have a second computer that is connected through a network. And can, can you tell us more about it, and how is that useful to a developer? Yeah, because it's, it's really all about like getting to the point where you're programming as quick as from the time you open the box to the point where you're actually writing your Hello World program, going all the way to writing yeah. something that, that really does something. Yeah. So, so the bigger board is start start off its program. You don't it's need program. to there's get an onboard, SD card or anything there's, there's to get an onboard, onboard flash, and oh, we could go on forever, right? Because there's the, the the EMMC flash that's on there, which is much better suited for for doing like real development than trying to use micro SD cards to put your operating system on. But the great thing about it is it already comes with a Debian. A Linux image on it, um, and there's a, a thing called the the, the Cloud9 IDE. Um, now that's um, uh, based on an open source. Uh, well, it is, it is an open source IDE, but it's the uh, it, it's not something in the cloud. The, the implication is that there's the, well, okay, it's using Cloud9. It's going off and using the 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 Cloud9 servers. No, it's being hosted on the board itself. So any way you get a network connection to the board. Whether it's over over Wi-Fi, Ethernet, uh, Bluetooth, um, or USB, you can you can do your development. So you don't need to plug in keyboard, monitor, or mouse to actually work with the computer with the tools that are already hosted on it. So you just point your web browser to the board. Um, you get to a, a command terminal. You get to the Linux command prompt. Um, you get to a text editor, and all the tools are already built in. You got the Beagle ball and you plugged it in. The Beagleborn is the cloud, in a way. Yeah, it's, it, it is the cloud. I mean, the cloud is always <laughs> existing somewhere physically, and we want for people to, to really build that understanding, right? It's if it's in a data center or somebody else is doing it, here you own your own cloud, yes. right? So you, you have your cloud. Correct. Right? This is the cloud. So I, I plug in a, a anything with a browser, really. Yep. It can be any machine or any, any operating machine. system. I just need a browser. Just so through a browser, browser I'm connected to the BeagleBone, and I'm writing code now for the processor, and I'm writing code for the PRUs. And the PRUs, just to explain this in like really lame, simple terms, that might not be the right explanation, but think of them as, there's two of them in there, right? There's, there's two, two of them on the, the, the processor on these, yes. So those, these two PRUs are basically two very tiny microcontrollers that are dedicated for one job, to do th something real time and do it really well. So while the operating system might be busy doing a million things, the PRUs are doing one specific job, and they're doing it really well in real time. They have their own um, separate uh, uh, RAM uh, memory that the code, their code sits on, and, but then they still have access to other peripherals. So they can touch other peripherals, like control the pins, or control other, uh, like URT, or any other peripherals on the system. But then I learned today from you that actually the PRUs have access to certain pins directly, so those pins can be controlled at really high speed. Like you can, you can implement CAN bus in software, which if you know what CAN, you would know that's, that's crazy. 
but that you can even do that with PRUs. What clock speed these PRUs yeah, are at? Yeah, you're saying that they're really tiny, and they're really tiny, but they're running at 200 megahertz. And they're 32-bit they're, they're cores, right? These are 32-bit risk cores. And for those special pins you mentioned, right, those are directly mapped into the R30 and R31 registers. I always forget which one's in and which one's out, but I think like R30 is the inputs and R31 is the outputs. Okay, so, so, so calling them tiny is, is, is tiny. the right, they're tiny they compared tiny. To, the, to the TI processor overall. But if you're comparing to like a traditional like 8-bit microcontroller, these things blow them out of the water in performance. Um, and you know, and they're more significant. They're 32 bit, and they have full 32 bit addressing space, which is why they can reach all the different peripherals in the system, all the external memory, and, and some of the magic is that this is just the fact that these are all in one system, right? So you've got high bandwidth interfaces, so you can. Uh, for stuff like 3D printers, the, 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 the main core goes out and processes it all. You just read my mind. I was thinking the, stepper motors. The stepper so, motors, exactly. Yeah, so, so all the path planning gets done on the, the, the ARM Cortex-A8, right? So all the, the stuff that requires high throughput, right? That, that you need a lots of number crunching capability. Um, but then it just goes shoves them off into memory. And all the stuff that needs really low latency, where you need to control the timing really, really precisely, all the stepper motor pulses get sent out by the PRUs. So it's fantastic for building machine control systems. It's, it's a perfect marriage between a a um, a large operating system that has user interface, display graphics, uh, networking, everything you can think of as right, an operating system. And exactly. And that, Python and <laughs> yeah, and running Python, and running everything, and then you have these uh, I don't want to say small microcontrollers anymore. <laughs> these uh, the the other side of the equation where you are controlling the tiny things. So you have a, a 3D printer, and then there's the user interface, the display and whatnot that goes along with that 3D printer. But then when it comes down to like toggling pins and controlling the stepper motors and going to, you know, mo controlling motion, this is where it's perfect to have those PRUs. Another like, an example that comes to mind right now, I see this a lot where somebody could have like a, 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 a um, a board running Linux, for example, and that's tied to an Arduino, an 8-bit Arduino that's Arduino doing the toggling, where if you're using this uh, TI processor on the VegaBone, you, you already have both. You already right. have that. You might already get, it, comes for, it comes for free, and it's a lot more powerful than yeah. what you get with, with something like the, so, the smaller microcontrollers. When you have two systems, like a, a Linux machine or whatever high-end operating system, and then you have an 8-bit micro or whatever other microcontroller, the connection, that might be spy bus, UART, or whatever that might be between the two. You're very limited. You have to figure out some kind of interface packets to send the data back and forth. Where when you are when you live in one system, that that smaller subsystem, the real time system, have access to the memory space, yeah, so, the peripherals, so, so data can so be moved back and forth. So two hundred megabytes per second. That right? wouldn't work. If if you're, if you're, if you wouldn't work if you're trying spy. to do that over spy bus, yes, right? Yes. Which is running at 25 megabits per second, right? So yeah, orders of magnitudes difference. Yes. So examples of PRUs, which we, we want to show you a thing this in action in a, in a minute here. But uh, this is already in action. Uh, we have like a balancing balancing robot that's running the uh, BeagleBone uh, Blue. Is that the blue? Correct? That's the, yeah. That's the BeagleBone Blue, um, and it's got the the the, the, the way the the PRUs are being used in, in, in this one is uh, we wanted to have four. Uh, quadrature encoders on the BeagleBone Blue to match the four uh, DC motor drivers, um, but the, the the processor only comes with three quadrature encoders. Um, so, well, let's just make a fourth one. So, <laughs> so the PRU is actually running firmware on here to read back the position of the wheels. Um, so, um, so three of the three of the channels are, are hardware quadrature encoders in, in the chip, and the fourth one is implemented in PRU. Um, and you'll see like the, the, the quadcopter, so this is also running off of a, of a BeagleBone Blue, uh, and there you see it's leveraging the, the output um, from peer use. It's using the electronic speed control drive, or the pulse width modulation that's used to drive the electronic speed controls. Um, it's coming from the peer use. And that's really nice for the fact that you know, if you just put a hardware PWM on there, and the, the main processor, you wrote some bad code on it, and it locked up, you really couldn't do anything intelligent. You know, potential that you just fly off into the freeway and go crazy. Here, this detects that the main processor has been shut down and can intelligently like drop the power of the motors and try to bring it back down to the ground. Jason was nice enough to provide a demo 
um, a tutorial slash demo to show you quickly how to, you can blink an LED, which is what we have over here, an LED blinking on the beagle bone, but this is blinking through the PRU. Correct. And it's um, and this shows you how you can add your C code into from the beagle bone. So are we looking at a browser right here? Yeah, this is a browser running on my computer. Um, that all I've done is I've pointed to the IP address that's um, provided back by the, the BeagleBone over the USB connection. And I've opened up port 3000, which gets me into the Cloud9 IDE, um, where I get to the Linux command prompt and I get to the ability to browse and edit files. Yeah, um, so you, you install, literally install nothing on your PC. And then the compiler on, which is, this is amazing, if you, if you, <laughs> if you, if you understand how this works. There is a compiler living on BeagleBone that is compiling it's a cross compiler. Cross compiler. It's it is. It it's is compiling. It's, it's running on the ARM, but compiling pure U code. Yeah. So, so again, your cloud is your bigger board. Right. And you're you're just using a browser. You installed zero, nothing. Right. Just to talk to the to the cloud non IDE, and you can start typing code. And then the bigger bone has the compiler built in that compiles the code for the BeagleBone itself, or the, for the PRU, right. which is, I think this is truly amazing. I, I, this is, and I think a lot of people don't know about this magic of the BeagleBone, really. And until you're kind of, once you get inside of it, you discover what the simplicity it brings in terms of doing development. Wow, this is, this is, this is great. I'm blown away. This is all you need, BeagleBone. Okay, this has been great. Now, can we take this and have some fun? Oh, we can absolutely. We're, this is ready to fly. We're going to go outside and fly this right now. Okay, great. Let's go do it.